Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of Still Here, my marathon comeback. In this series, I'm taking you along on my journey as I train for and race my first marathon in three years and first postpartum marathon. In this episode, I wanna share a quick training update, how things have been going, and then I wanna talk about some of the obstacles I've faced from a scheduling standpoint and making sure that I am optimizing all of my hard workouts and able to recover from them. And then I wanna talk a little bit about fueling because that is always fun to try and figure out your fueling situation during training. And I uh, just wanted to update you on what's been working for me so far. So a quick training update. This past week, I ran my highest weekly mileage postpartum. I ran just over 42 miles. And prior to that, my highest weekly mileage had been 40 and I'd only done that twice. So I am really happy to be feeling so good. I also ran my second postpartum half marathon, I ran 13.1 miles in my long run. Trying to not compare my prior training to now and just look at what my successes are because I think that's just going to keep me positive as I continue to go through this process of relearning how to train for a marathon. And it was overall a successful week. I had a tough speed workout that did not go as well as I wanted it to, but Overall, just looking at the big picture, this was a, another good week of building and I'm excited to keep doing that. So the obstacles that I have faced in training so far are figuring out my schedule. As I mentioned in my first episode, I am working in person with a personal trainer on my strength. The hard part about this is that I am a slave to their schedule and most personal trainers work in the morning or in the early evenings. And early evenings are really tough because that's when I am doing dinner and bedtime things with my kids. So that means early mornings are the best time for me to go, but that also makes it tough to figure out how to keep my hard days hard and my easy days easy. As an athlete, you should always consider what is your primary focus at this point in your training. So since I'm in a marathon training cycle, running is my primary focus and I wanna get that done first so that I am fresh for those workouts and strength is kind of secondary. In a perfect world, I would have started a strength program with a personal trainer three months prior to starting marathon training so I could build that strength base and really maintain that through my marathon cycle. But here we are and I am building mileage and intensity and strength at the same time. And so I have really worked to figure out how to manage the schedule and realize that what I was doing wasn't working for me. This was my prior schedule. so. I was really focused on this, keep the hard days hard, I need to do speed and strengthen the same day and then I need to do my long run and strengthen the same day. But because of my personal trainer schedule, that meant I was getting up to do my speed workout at five and only had about 45 minutes until I had to be at the gym. So it gave me enough time to eat and fuel, but not a lot of time for my muscles to really recover from my speed session. Similarly, the long run, I was getting up and doing that at five and only had about an hour and a half between the end of my long run and my strength session. And I realized as my long runs were gonna get longer, I would just have to keep getting up earlier and earlier, which would mean sacrificing sleep, which is something I really cannot do. Sleep is something that I need more of and is hard to get when you have a small child. So I don't want to have to get up earlier to get that run in. I touched base with my coach and came up with a different plan. And the hardest part was being okay with making a huge change to my schedule mid training cycle and also just getting out of this idea that there was only one way for me to train, which was how I was doing it before, which was keeping those hard days hard. So now, this is my schedule. My biggest deterrent from being more accepting of the schedule was that I really didn't wanna do my long run on the weekend. I started doing my long runs in 2019 on Fridays and that was so that I could be more energized on the weekends, spend more time with my family, and have that flexibility to keep my weekends free. It was hard to make this adjustment, but I recognize that this is only for 12 or 13 more weeks and I need to make the sacrifice right now because eventually I won't have to meet with a trainer in person and I will be able to go to the gym whenever I want to and make that work with my schedule. So I'm just making the sacrifice for this training cycle and did my first long run today, which is Sunday, probably posting this a couple days later, and it was fine. I am early on in the training cycle, so 13 miles isn't wearing me out too badly. I probably feel like when I get a 20 miler in, I'm gonna need to nap when my kid naps and that's gonna be tough to get other things done on the weekend that I do when he naps. I'm gonna stick with the schedule for another three to four weeks to see if it is working for me. This week, the biggest thing I noticed was that I felt recovered from my workouts. Prior to this, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, I was still feeling like I was really fatigued from 
my hard day on Monday. This week I felt more flexible in my schedule overall and felt like I was recovered from each workout within the day. And I think that was probably just from lower stress on my schedule and having to fit everything in on those hard days in such a short period of time. On to the next topic, which is the gel situations. When I look back at my training cycle for CIM, I certainly had fine tuned this a lot and felt really confident in, I was getting more fuel during my marathons than I ever had before. And I was really focused on this 30 minutes, every 30 minutes getting fuel in. But I think one of the things I wasn't focused on was how many carbs were in those gels that I was taking. And that has been the bigger focus for me this cycle is making sure I am getting in 40 to 60 grams of carbs per hour. Um, so st I'm still trying to incorporate the gels that I like and that sit well with me, but also figuring out how I can take in more fuel. So some of my favorite gels are spring. Spring is awesome. Um, I like them because they are easy to get down without water. They taste good, not overly sweet, and they're not super thick. And that thickness is like goose and things like that. It's not so well with me. I was alternating between Huma gels and spring prior to this. Uh, coming back to Huma this time, I think they're a little too sweet for me right now. I am still using them every once in a while, but I am a little bit more reliant on the spring. Today, I finally went for it and I tried Morton. I have been hesitant to try this for so long because the thought of taking jello or something that had a jello-like consistency during a marathon sounded awful. I like them a lot. <laughs> um, it really tastes like flavorless sugar jello and it was very easy to get down and I didn't necessarily feel like I had to have water with it, which is my biggest thing because I don't take gels all at once. I take them over a period of time. I feel like it doesn't overload my stomach as much and it's easier for me to get in more that way and kind of continuously fuel the engine. So today on my run, 13 miles, I was out there for an hour and 42 minutes. I did one Canterbury, which is only 17 grams of carbs. I pair it with the Spring Energy Awesome Sauce, which has 45 grams of carbs. So many carbs. And then I did the Morton Gel. So I had, which is 25 grams of carbs. So I got in 87 grams of carbs in an hour and 42 minutes, which I feel like it's pretty good. That is over 40 grams of carbs per hour. I am really trying to get closer to that 60 grams mark. I do personally feel like the more carbs you can get in, the better. So I am just trying to train my stomach again. I'm glad I've found a variety that works for me and will continue to kind of fine tune this. Training is all about experimenting. So I really don't go into a long run being worried that a gel is gonna upset my stomach because I would rather have it upset my stomach in a long run than on race day. So experimenting with all the things. So for what's ahead, I have a race coming up in a couple weeks. I am doing a 10K on Thanksgiving, a turkey trot, and I'm excited to use it as a data point to see where I'm at right now and to fine tune speed workouts for the next training block. And I'm kind of nervous to race. It's been a while since I've raced and 10Ks are not my favorite distance, but I am doing it in Long Beach in my hometown race. And I have done this race so many times, so I'm really excited to be back there and we'll see how it goes. As always, thanks so much for being here. Please make sure that you're subscribed for future videos. And if you have any comments, please be sure to drop them below. I'll see you next time.